These are the colors you're going to need for this drawing. White, black, some kind of green. I have two greens here, kind of a little bit lighter and darker one, but as long as you have a green, an orange or even a pink will do, and a thin black marker to do some lettering. The first thing we're going to do is the eye. Right here, that circle is going to be the eye. And I'll zoom in to show you what to do with the eye. You want to make a little mark like this with your white right here. Something like that. Okay, can you see that? Maybe I'll zoom in a little more. And then you're going to color black all around it. Now, of course, you can probably guess that that white is going to be kind of like a little shine mark, a white highlight, so that the eyeball is going to look shiny and round. And then take your white and make a thin white line around that. Now, krill have compound eyes. Insects also have compound eyes. I'll show you a picture of what a compound eye looks like under the microscope. I'll zoom out a little bit. So that is an insect eye. And each one of these little things is a lens. Our eye has just one smooth bump. But theirs has hundreds of little tiny lenses. So what they're going to see is something like this. So if we look at a butterfly, we see this. And an insect is going to see little facets like this. Each little lens is going to pick up part of the picture. So it's going to kind of look all broken up. Now the advantage to this is obviously not focused because to us this looks blurry. The advantage is being able to see motion. And the extreme case is the dragonfly whose eyes are so big and the lenses are so good that it's just about impossible to catch a dragonfly. So a krill has a compound eye. Now we can't see all the little facets. It's very dark black so uh, without a microscope, you really can't see it. But just so you know, it's a compound eye. All right, let's zoom back out. And go to work on the body. And we're going to take your white, and we're kind of going to use this as a sketching tool, lightly. See these lines across here? You're going to kind of play connect the dot across the top. Just kind of sketch just like you would with a sketching pencil and it's white. Kind of go like that. And then down here on this last one, you can see that's going to be the segments of the body. And down here, see that little dot right down there? That shows you where the end of the tail is going to be. So don't go any further than that. And you want to make, let's get something like that. I'll zoom in. And then let's make a middle one like this. Go kind of right to the dot. Like a long, thin thing going down. And then this top one, like that. Kind of like this. Now the tail, what we've just drawn is called the telson. And it's folded up right now. It's like a fan. You know those the Asian women used to carry those fans in the old days and they'd it would fold up very small and then they'd whoop they'd spread it out and it would go out large. Well here's a telson from something this isn't a krill. I don't think that maybe a shrimp or a lobster or something. But when it's folded out, 
the telson kind of looks like that shape. And so you can fold these in like this if you wanted to and make it, they can all kind of all tuck in under this one. So the krill can do that. And you usually see in the pictures of the krill, like this one right here, the telson is usually folded together. But I've seen videos of them swimming with the telson kind of fanned out like that. So let's finish these body segments. And let me show you the picture again here, the way they're going to kind of look. Reminds you a lot of a lobster. So the feet are going to be coming out the bottom. There's one, two, three. See, not counting this. Just make a line up like this. The first one is connected to like the tail. Right here. Right. So that one's done. But this one, one, two, three, four, five. These five segments are the ones that are going to have feet coming down off of them. So let's go like this. I'll do this shape twice and you watch and then you can do it on your paper. We're going to come down like this. Down. Kind of up like that. See that shape? Okay, let me do it again. Then this one. Down. Like this. And then back up to the bottom of that line. Okay, if you want to see it again. Down like this. They go back up to that line. So you need to make one of those under each of these five segments. And that bump there, that's where the little foot is going to stick off. So let's connect the body to the eyeball and on the top what we want to do is go from here the top of that line over to the top of this right here so we'll kind of make a line that comes like I'll kind of indicate with my pencil before I draw it it's going to see so just watch it's going to go down here and then it's going to kind of make big a little shallow kind of go down a little bit and then back up. So if I was going this way, I would go down and then just make a nice, just a little dip, just a nice slight curve. All right, so I'm going to do it, and you can watch, and then you can do it on your paper. So I'm going to go down like this. The shell just has a little dip, and then back up again like that. Just see, and you can kind of use your white, kind of like a sketching pencil, like that. Just a little bit of a, a dip down and then back up like that. Okay, there. And then on the bottom, I will indicate first with my pencil where we're going. It's going to come down like this, and then back up to here. It's going to come down. In fact, let's just do this here. Just make a line like this, kind of coming down around from the eye, and like that. So that's kind of where our bottom shell piece is going to go to, right there. So I'm going to sketch like that. And kind of in, kind of a nice graceful line. Lines in nature are always very graceful. They, they work well, they function well scientifically, but they're also beautiful. Something like that. And again, there's lots of different kinds of krill, so if you see one that looks a little different than this, it's okay. It's probably a different kind of curl. Alright, so let's finish up the shape up here and then we'll come back and we'll fill in the body and kind of do some tricky shading. So now we just have this front antennae area. And let me show you a couple pictures so you know where we're going with this. Alright, so he's got this thing coming out here and it's really hard to tell on any picture you look at what is it. It looks like there's maybe three segments. The antennas come out here like that and there's like this one see that goes out the bottom and there's one that curves down. So that's one picture. And here's another it's kind of dark but if you can see this thing coming out here and it's got some antennas going over it. Bottom one. 
Now this one's turned the wrong way, but you can see again there's several little things coming out there with antennas on it. So we're going to simplify ours and we're going to kind of go like this right here out from the eye like this. We're going to bring out a section that's going to go like this, kind of easier sketching thing at first, about like that, about an inch or so. And then out from here, that bottom we drew, we're going to make another one coming out this way, and there's going to be an antennae hanging off of this one. And then in the middle, there's some kind of thing here. I'm not sure what this is a, like a little mouth part or something that comes out here. Seems like there's something in there. So this is an awfully complicated area when you look at photographs and stuff. So we want to be accurate here. Let's we'll make a little segment section like that. And then it's really hard to tell if this one's segmented or not. So let's fill in a little bit like this if they're white. Now, krill are clear. They're transparent. You probably noticed in this picture, it's like you can see through them. And you just about can. Like right here, there's the blue of the water showing through. So I think doing the white on the blue, we're going to kind of get that effect to make them look kind of transparent. All right, so this one down here, let's give this a little bit of white. And we're going to come back in here maybe a little orange in a little bit. But for right now, that's approximately good enough. And then the antennae are going to be coming off. Let's see. I need to put this down a little bit. There's the corner of our paper. Let's see how close we are to the edge. So this one will have one two sticking off like this. And again, it's really hard I've been to know where the antennae are. I've been studying lots of different pictures and every one is a little bit different. And a lot of them it looks like there's about six lines coming out. And this one, there's only three, but you see they only have five or six legs right there also. And there's actually twelve repairs. So I'm thinking maybe that's half the number. Even with the antennae there, I'm showing half the story there. So there's also one that comes out, and oftentimes you see it kind of going down like this at this angle. One on one side, and then one on the other. We'll draw the ones on the far side here. We'll draw it really lightly, like this is kind of in the distance. You can't see it too well. This is the one close up. And then these will curve around. These are kind of long, and they kind of go like this. See that one is kind of covering up that other one, but it's okay. Don't worry about the exact shape. Yours don't have to look like this. In fact, if your antennae of these two aren't crossing, you know, so much the better. Okay. So then there probably is another one coming out kind of from the other side. And real, just make it real light. Suggest that there's another one on the other side to make it light. Nice and light. So even though the krill probably has reasonable eyesight, it still has these long antennas in which it can explore and feel its environment. Now, sometimes it might be in an area where there's not a lot of light, so it's really going to need the antennae for its backup, because the antennae will function without light. Okay, so let's go back down here and work on the body some more. Now the tail, we really don't have to add much. You can just kind of fill in a little white if you want to. We really don't have to do much to that. Now these segments here, we're going to pretend that our pencil is really a regular sketching pencil. You know, if we want to shade something, we would 
go start real hard and then lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. Go lighter very slowly so you can hardly even see any different, any distinct abrupt change between light and dark like that. So the edges will be slightly darker and then you kind of ease up towards the middle and that really makes it look nice and round. We can do that to each segment. Now, we're, we may go back over this with orange. If you want to, you could just leave your drawing white, but I think I'm going to add some orange to mine because a lot of times krill do have some orange on them. So let's make it a little bit more intense down where the little footies are going to come off, and then on the back, darker and then lighter. And then in the middle there, you can actually leave some blue so you can, that can be the water kind of peeking through, color the water behind. And of course, water isn't actually blue, but it often looks blue because of the way that the light scatters through it. And underneath the Antarctic ice, it would look blue a lot with the water coming through the ice. So along this top here, we'll make the white more intense. Now the nice thing about these white pencils, if you're using the Prismacolors especially, is that you will be able to color other colors on top of the white. And actually having a little white underneath there will actually make the other colors show up better. You can actually see I'm getting a line up here from the underside there. Am I? Okay. And then on these also. This is the most of the coloring you're going to do. It's right here. And then you might want to put, actually, you could cover over those um, black lines there. You try to put a little bit of white over them. And it's not really covering, but anyways, you can add a little white. Right about like that. So I'll meet back out and see what we've got all together now. Something like that. Now we need to add the legs here. And these are going to be the swimming legs. There's going to be a pair, two legs off of each segment, two, four, six, eight, ten, so that'll give it ten swimming legs. And the legs that are going to come off here are the feeding legs. And there's going to be six pairs, so it'll have a total of 12 legs coming off here. And the legs are quite different. Let's take a look. See, there are the swimming legs. They're short. And they have like a furry paddle thing on them right there. There's this little stumpy segment, and then they each have like a paddle. And this, the feeding legs are really long and skinny. And they have a lot of little hair-like things in here that act as filters. So let's zoom in here. And put a pair of legs coming off of each of these bumps. So I'll zoom in on the first one here. Now yours can be going out this way or down here because he's going to be moving, paddling. So perhaps you caught him at a time when they were up here bent like this. So yours don't have to be bent in the exact same direction that mine are. I'm just going to put one like this. And there's the one sticking out behind. 
So that's the one that's close to us. And there's kind of a light one back there. And they can be, they can look very separate like this. They can look like this one. It looks like they're, you can just barely see that one peeking out just a little bit behind. Or they can be more like that. Where you can really see two of them. So this is maybe like the knee, and then this joint down here will be kind of like the ankle with the little foot sticking off, sort of. So just go like this from each one. Just make a little line like that coming off. And then little things like that. And I'll show you why we just did that. If you look in this picture, see how they... Look hairy. Now in this picture they didn't draw the one behind, they just draw the front one. But you can see it's got these little things coming off. Okay. So let's make another one. Okay, so those are the swimming legs. Sometimes they're called swimmerettes. They have a fancy scientific name. The uh, pleopods, I think it is, but we're not going to bother with that. These are the things that paddle like this. They flick them like that. That's how they swim. I'm going to zoom back out just a little bit here. Okay, and let's put the filter feeding legs here. So, let's see a picture of them again. Some long, skinny things. These things here. Now, these are the gills sticking out. We're going to do that afterwards. Long, skinny feeding legs. So we're going to make six of them in the foreground that we can see really well and then six more that are kind of lurking behind. So these don't have to be exact. And we have the words here that tell us the krill have six pairs of skinny front legs they use for filter feeding. They catch phytoplankton, that's things that do photosynthesis, made of algae, diatoms, and dinoflagellates. So it kind of reminds me of like the shape of like the, how a praying mantis kind of has his legs that go like that, kind of up. Let's see, this is three. If they run into the words a little bit, you can kind of just go through the words there. Kind of behind, looks like it's going behind the words. Four. So there's a kind of like one, two, three segments to them. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to draw a few behind here, just real lightly, kind of like sticking out. So 
So it would have a total of 12 legs here all together, six pairs. There. Now these heavy ones that are in the foreground, these are the ones that I'm going to go like this. Zoom in a little bit. We're going to make, it's like you, they look like maybe combs and that's really what they do. They comb through the ice and trying to comb out tiny particles to eat. And I'm going to put a few light ones on those back ones, too. So they look like they're filters. And then right here, on top of these legs, we're going to put the gills. I want to show you a photograph first. Now this krill, yeah, I think he's saying he's going the same way. So these would be the feeding legs going out. There would be one of the swimmer legs down there. And so these feathery light gills are sticking out from underneath the shell here. And they kind of cover the top of the feeding legs a little bit. Now this is one of the differences between krill and lobsters or shrimp. There's some very small shrimp, but they're not krill. Krill have these external gills that hang right out into the water, and that's one of the defining features of being a krill. You can see it right here, like this, these feathery things sticking out. So we're going to take our white, like this, and make some feathery things sticking out over. So I know we've got white, this is going to be white on white, so for, for the gills, we want to go really dark, really press hard with your pencil and just kind of go, I'm just going to go like this. Make one like that, and then I'm going to make another one, because they do come in little sections, sort of. Like in other photographs, you can see that there's little like, sections. Like, and there's another one, and another one, and another one. There. It doesn't matter exactly how many there are. Something like that. So you've got kind of these fuzzy white area. It's a really complicated area in photographs. You're like, what's this stuff? It's all legs and gills all mixed together and kind of hard to tell what's what. Alright, so we have enough parts here. Let's label some things and then we'll go back and do some coloring. Take your thin ink pen and let's write right here above the shell you know it has a hard shell like a crab or a lobster it's in the same family group crustaceans it's a crustacea just like lobsters and shrimp and copepods and barnacles and even those little pill bugs you find in the woods in North America it's in the same group so they all have this hard shell and it's called the carapace so let's write the shell is called the carapace. The shell is called the C A R A P A C E. Carapace. Let me zoom in so you can see it. There we go. The shell is called the carapace. And let's label. We just did the gills here. Let's just point right here. Just write gills. G-I-L-L-S. And then let's label these as swimming legs. If you want to look up its official name, you can. But we're just, for now, going to put swimming legs. 
And over here I have a note about the tails called the Telson, but we can go ahead and label it. And then let's put a note here. We've got the feeding legs, but let's write filter feeding legs. So if they're filter feeding, we'll come back in just a second and make some little picture of what they're eating, what they're feeding. And then let's just label these guys are all in tennies. A-N-T-E-N-N-A-E. -N -N -E. This one, this one, here's more in tenny. They've got a lot of sets. And then we'll put compound I, so we remember it's like an insect. C-O-M-P-O-U-N-D, compound I. Now let's give it something to eat in its filter feeding legs. This is where you need your green little particles. I think with darker green is going to show up better. It is eating tiny single-celled algae. These things would be just about microscopic. It would look like a green fuzz. You would not be able to see the individual cells, but let's go ahead and make them like dots. And then it would eat some diatoms. Those are also microscopic. They wouldn't be green. You could use, um, if you had a tan hand or something and you wanted to, or yellow, and you wanted to put some diatoms in, they'd be more of a yellowish brown. In fact, diatoms are classified as yellow-brown algae. So, I didn't tell you that at the beginning that you might need that color, so it's okay. If it's just green, that's fine. Because when they show up in here, let's go and uh, put the like stomach area in, it's going to and it's going to eat these with its mouth parts here, it's going to catch them, and it's going to go in the mouth, and then it has a little little um, esophagus that goes down to a little digestive system area, and then it'll have an intestine, we're not going to draw it, but it'll have an intestine, and then it'll exit hole. It has an actual real digestive system, kind of a simpler version of what we have. And right here, you can see, and I'll show you in this picture, you can see their green area. Oh, this one's really good. Look at that right there. Okay, and there's this little, there's the little, uh, I think this is a little piece of intestine that goes back, and there it is coming in right here. So this is the digestive system, and it's green because it's full of the algae that it was eating. And there it is in there. So let's make a greenish area in here. So because it's transparent, it's clear, like grass, you can kind of just look inside and see what it was eating. Now on the video here, this looks a lot stripier than it does when I'm looking at it live here. It's, it doesn't look quite as stripey as it is in the video. So I'll try to smooth it out a little bit, go back in with the white, and try to, hopefully yours will look a little smoother. Okay. So in the drawings I've seen, it's not labeled stomach. It's labeled something like hepatopancreas. So technically, we shouldn't write stomach, but if you think of it as a stomach, that's probably okay. It's the digestive area. So now let's back out a little bit again and add some orange. Now I'll show you again a picture that shows the coloring. A little bit. You can see, well, this one, you can see a lot of orange in that and in that. And here's somebody holding one. You can see how small they are. See, it's just a little thing in his hand. And here's a swarm of them. They get together in the spring and summer, and 
So the little tiny, see you see little tiny dots here? Maybe those are eyeballs. But there's probably like millions of them in this swarm. And the baleen whales love this. They see one of these big cloudy pink areas, and this is like lunchtime. And they come and they just swallow the, almost the whole thing if they can. This one is pretty typical for coloring. Usually you have a little bit kind of along the top like this and down near the leg, and then a few spots. So if you can download some pictures from the internet and have them available, you can kind of use those as a guide for coloring. Now I'm going to take my orange and you can leave yours white again if you'd like to. It's okay. But if you'd like to add a little kind of like on the side a little bit like that. Let me zoom in. Okay, and again, it looks kind of stripey on the video here. In my drawing, it looks a little better when I'm seeing it. it looks a little smoother. Like that. So down here where the, we'll call it the knees, this is like their knee, little knee joint. There's always a real spot color right there, real dark right by the joint, and then it kind of gets a little bit lighter as it goes up. And then you can, if you want to go down that a little bit, you can or not. Some pictures they have it, some they don't. And then we'll add some spots. That's like some dots here. And it's really up to you, the rest of this, depending on the picture that you're looking at, how much orange you want to put on. If you want to leave some more white, that's fine. Just don't go overboard with the orange, just really light. I'm kind of going to run along the bottom here so you can show up the gills a little bit better. You can even layer it over the green real lightly. Make the green look like it's underneath. So that is what an adult krill looks like. And the there's male and female. I don't know which one this is, but the female will lay the eggs. So the eggs will fall even maybe a thousand or two thousand feet down to where it's completely dark. And they'll hatch down there in the dark. And then immediately they'll have to start growing and swimming up towards the surface because they'll need to feed on the phytoplankton. And these are green, right? They need the sunlight to do photosynthesis. So the source of food for a krill is at the surface. So the goal is to swim up to the top as fast as you can. Now when they hatch, they look very different from this. So in this box here, we're going to draw a baby krill that's maybe only a week or two old. When it first hatches, it looks like nothing more than a circle with some little stubs sticking out of it. And then it will molt that means it'll come out of its shell just like all crabs and lobsters do and spiders molt lots of things molt um, because you can't grow when you're inside a stiff shell so they need to grow a little bit shed the old shell and then they cut they're a little bit larger and then when they want to grow again they have to get rid of the shell here's an actual photograph of the nopleus that we're drawing see the two tiny eye spots there and I think this kind of faint line right here is kind of where the shell of the egg used to be. 
So you can see it's doubled in size since it hatched. You can see there's a little some segments on this one, but not on here. And then when it gets a little older, it looks like this. It starts growing a tail section out here. Still doesn't have any swimming and feeding legs. But every time it molts, it sheds its shell and goes to the next stage, a few more little legs appear. So it'll molt maybe a dozen times at least on its way up to the surface. So we're going to draw a krill that's not very old. And so we're going to go back to sketching with our white real lightly here. You're going to draw a circle about that big. Leave room for some arms and legs sticking off. They're not really arms and legs, they're appendages. And off the back here, this is going to be the back end. There's just two little bumps, and they look like they have things sticking out like that. And then the top has going to have one, two, three, four. They're going to look more like antennae than legs, actually. One's going to kind of go out like that. The other one goes out like this. And these two are going to go like that. And then you can make them have little segments, little pieces like this. And that one has some little segments. And this stage, this one's kind of more like that, not too segmented. So these are what are eventually going to be these swimming legs and the feeding legs. Right now they just function mostly just for swimming. And a little tiny one this big doesn't need to eat very much. It's a good thing because it's really dark down there. Swimming up, it has all the energy that it needs. Looks like it got a food source inside of it that came from the egg. And that's the sort of like what the yolk is in a chicken egg. It's a source of energy for the growing chick. And so it kind of has an equivalent to yolk, so it's been feeding on the yolk, so to speak. So it doesn't need to eat for a few weeks, and that gives it time to get up high enough that it can start finding little algae. Now, it does have little tiny eye things right here. Baby eye spots. And then inside, it kind of just looks all complicated like this, kind of bubbly. You really can't tell. That's what in here, in the pictures, it just kind of looks like that. There. And we'll give it, how about, this will be the antennae. Stick it off like that, maybe. And that's called the N-A-U-P-L-I-U-S, Naplius. And you don't have to write it here if you don't have room. It's right here. No, please. Right there for you. Since I had room, I just decided to label it. And do notice that right here we have an actual size krill. They range from 2 centimeters to 15. This one's about maybe 3 or 4 centimeters. So the largest a krill would ever be would, you know, be something like that, less than this. This is double life size, even for a large one. They never get this big. So remember, they're tiny little things that can fit in the palm of your hand, usually about the size of your little finger. Something like that, if you imagine them as being about that big, that's about right. 